please. You understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Listen to where the meetings were held. 14 of them. One in St. Augustine, Point Fortin, San Fernando, yeah. Arima, Sangri Grandi, Princess Town, Sugar Warners, Debe, Port of Spain, Separia, Cuba, El Dorado, Rio Claro, Mearo. All over the country. No discrimination. PNM constituencies, non PNM. The idea was that we will expose all the people of Trinidad. Notice none in Tobago yet. We'll talk about Tobago separately. All the people of Trinidad to what this document had. 14 meetings. At the end of the day, the comments that Dr. Ryan and Dr. Laguerre were able to elicit from the public were made available to the round table and the round table began its discussions. And we hammered out things. We hammered it out. And the document that you see published in January of 2009 was the 11th version of the document. The 11th version of the document we published we had 10 more versions of that document before we arrived at a version of the document which we thought we could put out for public comment. You understand the process, my dear friends? It was a process that involved many people. It was a process that involved the people of Trinidad and Tobago. It involved the technocrats and academics and the politicians. And in respect of Tobago, there were two consultations. So we put it out and we said, okay, this document is up for public comment. I can tell you what will follow next from that, and it has been up for public comment since January, so that we're not hustling anything. Remember the process started in September 2006. Well, the process of consultation started in September 2006. The process of document drafting started as early as March of 2006. And we said the document is there for anybody to comment on. Any comments you have, make it available, and we gave an address and so on. People were free. But I am not surprised that many people did not comment on it from the grassroots in the society. The reason is the document, a constitution, is not something that the average citizen can understand. In 1972, they published a document called Thinking Things Through. It was an attempt to educate the public on the issues involved in constitution reform so that you will be sufficiently educated so you can take a decision on some of the matters. But, as you know, those documents were difficult to read. And rarely, rarely, as laudable as the effort was, it did not meet the requirement. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we are in Shogunas tonight. And that is why we are moving all over the country. Because we have decided we are going to explain the Constitution to you in the simplest possible terms so that you can understand it. Not only that, we will draw your attention to pitfalls and we will highlight some of the things that you need to consider and think through. And remember, what I am putting out to you are merely ideas, some of them in the draft document, some of them not, but merely ideas because the PNM has not yet done the internal exercise and therefore the PNM has not yet taken a position on the draft. So we are putting out ideas for your consideration. Is that fair enough? Yes. All right. So my dear friends, 31 meetings. Professor Ryan withdrew from the round table after meeting number 20 in October of 2008. And Professor Hamid Ghani joined the round table in January of 2008. I love this place. The question is, my dear friends, what happens next? What happens next is this. Professor Ghani, who incidentally is a member of the Principles of Fairness Committee, I repeat, Professor Ghani, who is a member of the Principles of Fairness Committee, the people who published the first draft constitution, is also dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, I think it is, at the University of the West Indies. And we've asked him, together with his faculty, to do an exercise for us where you go around the country and you ask for comments on the document that has been put out for public comment since January of 2009. For more comments. 
And the proposal that he has put forward calls for 51 meetings, one in each constituency, plus consulting certain other interest groups. 51 meetings. And we believe, my dear friends, that the process which already has taken three years is likely to take two more years before we can come to a final conclusion. Understand, we're not hustling it. We're taking our time. We're explaining to the people. We're trying to ensure that everybody understands what is involved. We're trying to ensure, my dear friends, that everybody has a chance to comment and takes advantage of the opportunity. We are trying to ensure that there is maximum participation in the process of constitution reform, which, as the learning says to us, is a prerequisite for a properly conducted exercise. The process and the result which must be based on the history and culture of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So there you go. That process should start soon, and we will keep you informed. I will urge once again all sections of the national community to look at the document, especially our students in the primary schools, in the secondary schools, in the universities. We would like to hear what our students have to say. Young people have a voice in a Trinidad and Tobago governed by the People's National Movement. We like to hear what they have to say. We want to hear. We're not rushing it. What we anticipate is after that 51, those 51 uh, consultations are held, the government will now put out a green paper, and a green paper is a statement of intent in relation to government policy. So the government will now put it out. And meanwhile, we will do our consultations within the PNM, but the government will now put out a document. And when we put out that green paper, it will go for public comment again. And we finally are proposing, as it now stands, a Queen's Hall type arrangement similar to what took place in 1962 on the occasion of the independence constitution, a process that worked well. We are now proposing that in the final analysis, we will sit down in a forum such as that and hammer out a final position. That, my dear friends, is an extremely good exercise in the democracy that we enjoy in Trinidad and Tobago at this time. That is the first matter I wanted to deal with tonight. The process, the process, therefore, is very laudable. Some people say there is one group in the country that says we started the wrong way. There is one group in the country that says that you should have started without any document at all. Before you do anything, this is what they say. Before you do anything, you should have gone to the people and hear what the people have to say. My dear friends, that would be an exercise in futility. And when you do it that way, you leave the door open for those with ideas that are strange to Trinidad and Tobago and those with other objectives that have no place in a democracy such as ours can come and say things that sound right but are not right and give people an impression that is totally removed from where the truth lies. That's what happens. And our experience tells us, and the PNM has experience like no other political party in the country, our experience tells us that the best way to handle it is to put a document out and use that as a basis for discussion. That's the process. As we embark on constitution reform, there are two other principles of which the society must be aware and with which the society must be familiar. The first, my dear friends, is a principle called the separation of powers doctrine. The separation of powers doctrine. It sounds big, but it is easily explainable. Let me explain it to you. In the year 1748, there was a political philosopher, a Frenchman called Montesquieu, who enunciated this doctrine, and it was so well done, and so well rooted in principles and philosophy, that philosophers and now lawyers and constitutionalists all around the world, and governments and countries have adopted the principle of the separation of powers. Listen to how it goes. And Montesquieu says that when the legislative and executive powers, when the legislative and executive powers, that is to say, the power to make laws, which is the legislative, 
and the power to run 